TV dinners. Those frozen, pre-cooked, and pre-portioned meals that can be heated and ready to eat in minutes became an American culinary icon in the mid-20th century. The concept really took hold in 1953 when Swanson's frozen meals appeared. The Swanson TV dinner hit grocery stores on September 10, 1953 and was an immediate success. In 1954, Swanson sold more than 10 million units and the next year, 25 million. Sales grew exponentially from there. The first official TV dinner consisted of turkey, gravy, cornbread stuffing, sweet potatoes, and buttered peas, and it sold for 98 cents. The food itself was packaged in a foil-covered, segmented aluminum tray to be heated in the oven. The cardboard box it all came in was designed to look like a television set, complete with dials and a volume control knob. Why turkey? Well, during the previous Thanksgiving, Swanson made a mistake and greatly overestimated the need for turkey. Once the holiday was over, they were left with 260 tons of turkey and had no idea what to do with it. To keep them from thawing and going bad, Swanson placed the frozen turkeys in 10 refrigerated railway cars. Since the car's refrigeration only worked when the vehicles were moving, the company shuttled the trains back and forth between its Nebraska headquarters and the East Coast while the company desperately brainstormed solutions. The company was taking ideas from the entire organization, and Jerry Thomas, a salesman for the company, came to the rescue. Thomas's idea for the project was to make frozen Thanksgiving dinners and to call them TV dinners. This name played on the newly common ritual of gathering around the TV in the evenings. Thomas had just seen the compartmentalized aluminum trays used by Pan Am Airways and introduced the idea to the Swanson brothers. The idea was a success and they hung their advertising campaign on the newest craze to hit the nation, TV. Let's also not forget about Betty Cronin, who worked for Swanson as a bacteriologist. She was in charge of making the frozen meals actually taste good. Her primary job was to figure out how to design dinners so all the components could be heated to their optimal taste, texture, and consistency in the same amount of time, while continuing to look fresh and appetizing. She was successful at it, to say the least. Perhaps one of the largest reasons for the immediate success was their advertising campaign. Swanson tied the dinners to the must-have prestige of television, with packaging cleverly designed to look like mini TVs. They targeted women who worked outside the home, or just wanted a break from preparing family meals, and guaranteed dinner in 25 minutes. Swanson had TV advertisements that depicted elegant, modern women serving these novel meals to their families or enjoying one themselves. It also forever changed how Americans take their meals, with far more people eating informally in front of the TV instead of gathering nightly at the dining room table. Of course, as time went on, TV dinners weren't all made from Swanson's leftover Thanksgiving turkeys. More menu options were added. The later addition of a dessert compartment was another innovation that made the meals seem like a decent replacement to homemade. By 1960, Swanson was selling frozen desserts, breakfasts, and lunches. In 1973, TV dinners got supersized when Hungry Man extra large frozen meals were introduced. In 1986, 
foil trays were replaced with plastic, and the first microwavable TV dinners were introduced. As we moved into the new millennium, TV dinners evolved even further with changes toward more healthier options. And the TV dinners soon became known as frozen dinners to disassociate with a sedentary lifestyle. Nothing says nostalgia quite like a TV dinner. Many of us have vivid memories of watching our favorite TV shows and enjoying those hot meals in a metal tray with an entree, mashed potatoes, a vegetable, and maybe even a brownie. 